Well, hello and welcome to the channel. My name's Johnny and you're watching Hillbilly Modeling. And today's video is going to be on another hand tool from Tamiya. Now, from a few months ago, you probably remember, uh, if you've seen it, uh, we did do the <laughs> uh, Tamiya Handy Drill, which I found very useful. Uh, it's small, it's compact, uh, it works very well. And uh, if you didn't know, it has a little sister uh, companion tool uh, that is called the electric uh, handy router if I can get it out <laughs> and this is about to me as well uh, very very similar to the drill uh, it does come in a different color so we don't mix them up I guess so uh, this could be very useful uh, so what we're going to do on the channel is we're going to take a look at what's inside the box and we're going to go ahead and build this yes it is a model kit you do have to build it uh, and um, one of the things that does not come with though is batteries of course which you're going to need two double A's and then uh, some basic tools to put it together uh, and we'll go through that when we jump down on the bench and if you want to know this uh, uh, kit is item number uh, 74042 that's 74042 if you want to look for it uh, I did check on Amazon and it is available for just under 25 bucks. So, um, could be a good addition uh, to your modeling toolbox. So, let's jump down and take a look at what's in this box. So, here we are. Now, we will take a look here. Uh, they do have a suggestion of bits. Uh, which are not included. Safety goggles, which if you are using any kind of a rotary tool, is uh, for your safety, <laughs> of course, and not a bad idea. Uh, this kit did come out in 1999. All right, copyright 1999. Um, not much else there. And since I don't read Japanese, I can't really help you for that. So, <laughs> and that's all there is on the box top. Here we have what is in the box. So it looks like uh, that's our trigger group. Uh, also, we have our main housing and also our single reduction gear, I guess. Yes. So that's three sprues total. And then we have our bag with our electrical parts and the uh, center shaft, collet, battery contacts, and bearings. And of course, we have to put this together with screws and a little keeper and stuff. So we'll set that aside. And we have our instructions. And we're going to go through these instructions as we build it. But as you can see, it is a single set of instructions here, single page. And let's see what I recommended. Tools are two screwdrivers, um, large and small they call it, also some long nose pliers, some side cutters, or we'll be using sprue cutters, two batteries, and a modeling knife. So uh, let's go ahead and get our tools together, and I'll show you what we're going to use uh, in the assembly of this kit. So the tools I've chosen, I've got these two screwdrivers right here. Now you can use much simpler tools than these, but these are the ratcheting type, uh, which they, they work pretty good. That'll be good enough for what we need them to do. And we do have a pair of needle nose. These are long needle nose. And I'm gonna be using my sprue cutters here, as well as my hobby knife. Now, one of the things that we're going to want to do is take and get all this here out of the bag. I've already gotten the plastic parts out. What we need to really do, let me get rid of these staples. We don't need those in our way. Uh, we have our electric motor, which we'll set that aside. We have our screws here. And of course, we're going to have to cut that open. So we will dump all these parts here into one little cup so we can pick through that later. So an additional tool that I suggest that we use will be 
uh, some tweezers to help get everything out of these cups. And moving on to the next bag. Now, this one has a staple. Get that out of there. So it does come with one bit. So that's the main shaft. This is our collet and retainer. And so this is a like a diamond type bit that it comes with here. Not gonna need that anymore. Here we go. So all depend upon what speed this ends up being. It's a single gear reduction. It's gonna depend upon uh, whether or not it's actually how much the plastic it's kind of melting. If you've ever used a Dremel tool before, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to modeling. And these are our contacts. Bearings, gears, springs. Yeah, okay, so. That'll be easy for us to sort through and get our parts. So we'll put them aside there. And of course we have a tube of glue. I'm sorry, not glue, but <laughs> grease. No, no glue in this kit, uh, just the grease. I did have a hard time of getting the grease out of the uh, tube in the previous kit, so we may do something different this time. Uh, one of you guys suggested that you just cut this tube open and just squeeze it out onto uh, something and just use it that way. And I, I think that's probably the way we're going to go because it was really hard getting that grease out of that thing. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to start by cutting our main housing. Well, before I do that, uh, let us look at our instructions. How about that? Uh, step one, uh, we're going to be putting these battery contacts and motor contacts in, putting the gear on the motor and attaching the motor to the center carrier or frame assembly, whatever we want to call it there, uh, the motor mount. Now let's call it the motor mount. So let's do that first instead of fooling with the other stuff. We'll just keep everything in sequence. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these and get these parts out and uh, we'll go ahead and assemble them. So first up we have, I'll go ahead and set this right here so we can look at it and build it at the same time. We have our motor mount and then we have our long contact and our short contact. So, as you can see right here, we're going to start off with our long contact. Uh, simply goes in this way. And it's got that pin right there. As you can see, it's going to snap down around that. I don't know if you heard that or not, but there it went. So that one's in place. And then we have our second battery terminal. Just go straight in. And we need to snap it down into place there. Make sure it's all the way down. There we go. Forgive me if I'm talking to myself. They do tell you to make sure that you hear the snap right? I hope you heard it. I was probably talking over top of it. Anyway, we've got our motor next. So we've got the motor and we're going to put the uh, gear, the drive gear on the motor. So it just simply presses on. Okay. So it simply, simply presses on. Yeah, that's really easy. You just press it on until it's flush, like so. There we go. And then I'm looking. This is bent. I should have investigated that. That is bent a little bit. So that could be a problem if it's broken. I hope that it isn't. 
We're just going to straighten it back up. Oops. That was not supposed to happen. I think we're going to be all right. If I don't mess it up, should be okay. It was bent in the packaging. I didn't notice that, but there it is. Okay. I believe we're gonna gonna be all right there. We'll take a look and see. Uh, the motor has a flat spot on it, as you can see right there, my fingernail. And then we have our carrier with where the motor goes in. And we just want to press it in until it snaps, just like that. So we are going to take a look here and make sure that we got a good contact there where we had that bent terminal. Seems to be good. Other side is fine. I guess we'll find out when we put juice to it, huh? So we're in good shape there. We'll set that aside. Oh, flip over. All right, so I need to refold these, I guess. So you can see and I can see what we're doing next. All right, so next we need our two housings. We're also going to need uh, all of these little pieces. I'll go ahead and cut those off, and then we will continue our assembly all right, so I just went ahead and cut all these off the sprue so we're not fooling with that later. We're going to need this piece right here for now. And also we did these along with our trigger lock. So this is the trigger and we got two transfer bars. So we got those done. So first things first, uh, we're looking here. Now, this right here holds the shaft from rotating so that we can tighten up our uh, bits into the drill, or the router, I should say. <laughs> I try to call you a drill. Oh, so there's our button and lock and the spring. Let's set that aside. And this is the retainer for it. So it's pretty simple. Just put the spring on like so. Drop that in the, uh, I'm about to put it in backwards. There we go. Drop it in, button comes out the other side. Next, we got our retainer. And this is just a friction fit. Just wanna push it all the way down, like so. So I'm just going to make sure that it is all the way down. Yep. Okay. All the way down. And you can see how it works there. So that's in place. Next up, we're going to work on this lock. So we need this screw right here. So we're going to go to our screws. And we're going to pick one out. What did it, there we go. I think it's this one. So these should be the same size, same length. Yes. As the real thing. That way you're not kind of fumbling around with them. So this is the button that goes on the outside. This goes on the inside. Let's see. Put it in like that, and this goes up, just like that. If I can get it lined up, probably easier to do it this way. There we go. So to lock, you can see it right there. We rotate it that way, and that'll bring that nub over. Oops, and we just fell apart. <laughs> I 
Okay. Get back to where we were. There we go. Put our screw in. And now for our screwdriver. I have to get it locked. There we go. Oops. So this lock didn't really, it doesn't really index well on the handy drill. So I'm kind of wondering how it's going to be here. Yeah, you can't hardly feel it. It's not that big of a deal. Um, I think if... Well, here's what I'm going to do. Because that has no contact at all. We're going to take this back out. Because I'm going to fix it. Well, I think I'm going to fix it. To where it actually works a little bit. All right, you fell apart before, now you don't want to. Okay. So this goes together like that. So I'm thinking if we come in here and we just kind of file that down a little bit or sand it down a little bit to make it closer, uh, we'll get a more positive lock on it. Either that or I'll break it. So <laughs> I hope I don't break it. So, you don't have to do a lot because polystyrene sands really readily, readily, so we will take that off too. Okay, so... We'll just give it a shot here and see what happens. I can get this back together. I know everybody's holding their breath, aren't you? Why don't you go back in there? There you go. There you go. All right, so back to our fancy screwdriver here. Just snug because this is plastic and you don't want to strip it out. Oh yeah, that works. That works really good. It doesn't shake around. Positively locked. I may go back into my handy drill and actually fix it. So. All right, just a couple of strokes there on the uh, mating surfaces there. And that works, works good. Okay, so where are we at here? Okay, so we need to do something about our um, grease. So, let's see here. Well, you say we take this and this and put all the grease on that. Well, we'll put it all right there. We'll be able to apply it as we need it. I'm going to use a different knife. Because I don't want my good knife, my good blade, I have to clean that later. Okay. Probably a sharper one would be good. <laughs> there it comes. What have you been cutting with this thing, Hillbilly? Right. 
as you can see guys there is not very much grease inside there so we are going to have to kind of conserve our grease so i'm going to go ahead and transfer this grease onto here and then uh, we'll continue with the build and as you can see that's all the grease i could get out of there that should be more than enough so i'll wipe this off all righty Now we can get back to our instructions. I think I'll use a toothpick to apply our grease. So we'll just put that right there with the grease. And uh, I need a bushing and a screw. So we need a screw, a bushing, and a flat washer. All these little flat washers are all the same size, so you don't have to worry about getting the wrong one. Just ch checking, I thought there was only three regular screws to put this thing together. We need four. Okay, so first up is the trigger. Now, as you can see here, uh, on the pivots, we have a large, see that large pin and a small pin. So the large pin is in this side. The small one is in the opposite side. So you don't have to worry about getting your trigger backwards. So we'll take and put a little bit of glue. Glue. I keep calling it glue. Uh, grease. Put a little bit of grease here. Don't need much. A little grease on the other side so I can stick my finger in it later and get it everywhere and then we have this transfer point right here we'll put a little grease on that too and now we just drop our trigger in like so and next up looks like this transfer bar right here is going to set onto this other bar. So we need to get the small one here. That would be this one. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on the pin here. And it just sits right here. Okay, and then our next one, all right, one thing we forgot was our spring, where's our spring at, there we go, and I have to have that, we go to put this all together, so the oblong hole goes up, and as you can see here on the rails, uh, it's very distinctive. So it'll only go together, I think, one way. <laughs> so, let's see. We'll go ahead and put some grease in here. I don't remember who gave me the tip to make sure that I cut that open. If I had cut that open... I believe is how it was <laughs> when I built the handy drill it would have been so much easier and he is right thank you for that tip come in handy this time okay so we have a bushing goes in from the back side here we'll do that The spring is going to go around this, and then the screw and everything is going to go in. So we're just going to make sure we get these points uh, located correctly. And then we'll worry about the rest of it. 
so. The grease will help keep things from flying around on us. That's a good thing. So next, I need the spring. Yeah, it goes in. Nah, uh, let's see. Goes in like that. And then we'll put our screw and washer together here. Just like so. That's a really little screw. And I'm going to find There it is. Just want to kind of get it started. Hopefully I'll get it started straight. It should be self-correcting. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to run a screw down till we make contact with our washer. So everything doesn't go flying apart. And now we can just take and flip our spring over right there on that notch. You see that notch right there? There we go. And we can run our screw on down. So we do have some space there underneath the screw head. I want to make it as snug as possible without impeding any movement. Yeah. Very nice, very nice, nice and smooth. I like that. So I'll double check. Yeah, it's like we're bottomed out. Nicely done. <laughs> so, let's move on to the next step. Let's see what we got going on here. So, some more folding here. Sorry about that. Uh, what's the best way for me to do this? So that I can see, you can see, we all can see. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to go ahead and get our parts together. We have a uh, our gear, uh, the solid uh, nylon bushing, a C-clip, or an E-clip, I'm sorry. Um, we use our pliers to apply that. I'm going to make sure that we remove, uh, they call it flash here. Most of us call them sprue gates, I guess. And then we have some washers, and we have another bearing that holds the rear of the shaft into the housing. So we'll put all that together and then put it in, and then lube up the, uh, the gear there. So I think I got it all straight. Let me find everything we need real quick. So uh, as I was cutting this out, I remembered from the, the handy drill. Um, these are very, very brittle. Let me see. What's the best way for me to do this? Probably this. Okay. So get that out of the way. I wanted you to kind of see how this is because you need to be cautious when you're cutting these off. Not to chip or break a tooth because that would be bad. And uh, it's kind of slip up in there and kind of cut those off and they'll just snap away and they they do come off rather cleanly it's not a big deal and I'm gonna kind of hit that just a little bit here with a 400 grit uh, sanding stick that's gonna be fine fine okay so first thing first we will take our main shaft here We got to put the bearing on, so we need to put our grease. Yeah, 
ended up a lot more grease than I thought I had. So. There's not a lot of areas here for the grease, so this would be fine. They want you to put it on this as well. Yes. So that's our nylon bearing. We'll put it in there too. Now most of that will squeeze out if it's a tight fitting uh, shaft, so we'll kind of see what happens here. There we go. That's on. Our gear is going to go on this way. It's going to engage like that. And then we got our clip. This is going to be a trick. See if I can do this without losing it. Get it laid in right there at the groove. And then we're going to push it up. I'm trying to kind of not cooperating with me today. That's all right. We're going to get it. Still not cooperating, are you? Oh, come on. Kind of being a pain. All right, I'm gonna do this off camera. Be right back. And of course, as soon as I turned the camera off, it went right on. <laughs> uh, so there we are. You just want to make sure that it is fully seated. Our E clip here, okay? Whoops. Okay. Because you don't want anything happening later on. Now, we do have, uh, let's see, a washer here that goes on over top of the E-clip. Put a little bit of grease there. If you put way too much grease, the only thing that's going to happen is just going to squeeze out. Okay. So we'll put this washer on just like that. Good extra e-clip. I guess they was expecting me to lose that e-clip. I'm kind of surprised that I didn't. Anyway. Sticky grease. That's good. It'll stay put. And when we have the end bearing here. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so next up, so we got that all built up. Drop it into the housing. Here's our housing. Drops in just like that. Now they're telling us to go ahead and put grease on our gear. edge there, didn't I? It's not going to do a lot of good there on the edge. So, here we go. Now, as it travels around the uh, the drive gear will distribute this a little bit more evenly into the teeth, and it shouldn't be an issue. So, with that greased up, we can go ahead and flip our instructions over. Here we go. Next up, we have this bar. That one right there. 
So we're going to go ahead and put that in. So we're going to need this. And they're showing you how it wraps around the pins. So it does. Just sits in there like that, right? Yes. Okay. Sits in just like that. And now we have this plate to put in. So we'll do that. Okay. So this gets sandwiched in I need to move that forward a little bit there. There we go. Get sandwiched in by the two halves of the uh, the housing. So now that we got that in, we're going to need uh, one, two, three, four screws right there to put it together. We'll grab our screws. One, two. Three and four. There we go. And we have the other half of our housing. Now, I kind of broke my own rule. I did not test fit this, but I don't think we're going to have an issue. And that would be the time that you do have an issue. But it kind of presses together. Oh, no, wait a minute. <laughs> we forgot to put the motor in. Silly hillbilly, what are you doing? I thought it was awful light. Come off, come off. That's not helping. There we go. All right. Motor assembly. We need to put that in. Now it does not say to put grease on the motor wheel, but you know, or the gear, drive gear. But that'll be all right. So these are the battery contacts. They're going to face down into the battery well there. And we have some, uh, you can see these notches down inside. I'll point those out there and there. So the corners of our battery mount are going to slide into those. That kind of holds everything together there. Probably wouldn't hurt to put a little bit of grease on the drive as well. Well, Hillbilly's having a hard time getting grease. There we go. That'll be more than enough, I'm sure. Because we did put quite a bit of grease there on the driven gear. Let's we'll slide it out of the way. Okay, so now, <laughs> now let's, uh, yeah, go back and put this together. So just want to make sure everything is seated. So we look pretty well seated here. So when we go to put these screws in, I'm going to start at the motor end up here. I think. Because I may need a smaller screwdriver. No, that'll work. Because I don't want the motor to, to shift on me. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put the other three screws in. You don't need to <laughs> sit through that. So let me get that done. 
Okay, so there we are. I put all four screws in. Uh, word of caution, you know, just remember that you are uh, putting together something that is plastic, polystyrene. So uh, don't put too much torque on those screws. You'll feel them bottom out, and when they do, that's when you need to stop. Okay, otherwise you'll strip out the uh, the receiving end of the screw down inside the plastic, and that will pose a problem there. And we don't need any problems. So next up, uh, two batteries. What to do with the batteries? Oh, there, there they are. So we put the batteries in. As you can see right there. Positive end down this way. And negative down that way. Like so. Our lock is off. So, should it work? Oh yeah. It works. Excellent. I know you had doubts. <laughs> I can't say that I didn't have doubts myself. So, there we go. Battery cover on. And they even tell you that you need to uh, kind of give it a little bit of push there to get it to go. So this is faster than the uh, than the drill, but then again, it only has a single reduction, so uh, the drill has a, a, a double reduction. All right, so that's done. I'm going to move on over here. I'm going to flatten that out. So this is how you use the collet. So this is what we're going to do. Collet retainer. Let's see. Do they call it? No, oh, they call that the chuck and this the collet. I tend to kind of call it the opposite. Okay. Push our lock in. And now we can tighten it down. Make sure it's secure. It's secure. All right. One more thing to do here. We have a sticker. I seen this when we uh, um, was taking everything out of the bags. Just like we have the handy drill, we got the handy router. So we'll just put it pretty much in the same spot we did the other one. Right on top. If I get it straight. If I don't, well, it'll just be a little crooked. It is, <laughs> gosh, it is a little crooked. It's all right, it's all right, it's fine. All right, next thing to do, I'm going to clear this mess off, and we're actually going to test this and see what it does. So this was our sacrificial part from when we actually made the drill. And now we're going to try the router out. And don't worry, I have my safety glasses on, okay? I made short work of that. All right, this one right here is kind of raised. Can you see that? Let me get right up to the camera. Yeah, this... So the speed is not so fast that it uh, causes a whole lot of burring. Of course, we're going to trade bits out in a second and see how that works long term or with a different type of cutter. So you can see that one right there. See how high that is in there? So 
get a good angle here. All right, so that does really good. I'm, I'm impressed. That does quite well. So when we go to take our bit, oh, before we take our bit out, let's try our lock here. So that is unlocked, and then we'll turn it, and it locks. So the sanding that we did on those parts right there for our lock actually worked out pretty good. As you can see, I did not do that on the handy drill, so it's kind of, I mean, it works, but... If it was tighter, those two parts closer together, then uh, it wouldn't be so easy to knock off of, of the lock. So, but this works really good. And it, when you shake it, it doesn't move. And then just a little bit of fitting and get that lock to work right. So that works good. All right, so uh, when we go to, well, let's lock it. <laughs> Safety first. Um, when you go to unscrew uh, your collet so that you can get the bit out of the chuck, you're going to have to press this button. It'll find an indent in the uh, uh, main shaft, and then you can just take that out. Now, the question is, will these other bits kind of work? So here's a bit. Now, these are Dremel bits, and they are slightly larger in diameter. As you can see there. So these are quarter inch, I think. Let me grab the calipers here. Get them turned on. I'll go to, I'm in inch, zero. All right, so this, I think is quarter inch. I'm sorry, eighth inch. Uh, one, two, four. So what would that be in millimeters? Roughly 3.15 millimeters. This is probably 2.4, 2.33. So I think that they will work. The only difference is uh, I don't think it'll go readily. See, it doesn't fit readily, but if we remove the collet entirely, we can get it, hopefully. I can't seem to get it in there. All right, so that one's not gonna go. I've got another one here, maybe this one will go. Uh, yeah, this one will go. That is too much though for that collet, so I'm gonna have to look for some other grinding burrs because we don't want to break the chuck. We don't want to bust chuck. <laughs> that would be bad. Uh, so, anyway. It does hold it securely. So I'm going to have to check around and find some uh, other other bits that we can use because, you know, with Dremel tools, you've got a, a variety of bits that you can use, uh, like this one and that one and that one. I, I wanted to try all these out, but they don't fit in that collet, or I should say chuck. So, yeah, because the shafts are just too large to go into the chuck. But the one it comes with, it works absolutely fine with it. Um, it is different. I don't know. Something to experiment with. But as far as the tool goes itself, it works really good. Uh, yeah, it works good. Yeah, I'm happy with it could also use it to maybe chamfer a drilled hole. What do you think? 
Yeah. Any number of uses you can do, and if you can find the bits to do the things that you want it to do, I believe that the handy router will do it. All right, so that, that will wrap up uh, this video for the uh, electric handy router. So there we go, electric handy router. Oh, got the. Got, <laughs> there we go. I, I just like doing that. So I think that this is going to be a good addition. The good thing about it is it's it's a lot lighter. I don't have a cord to deal with. Um, you can, I found this on Amazon for, I think it was $24.90 uh, here in the U.S., but of course they're going to add a little bit of sales tax with it, so um, I don't remember what the total cost was, but you know, for a $25 tool and a model kit too, uh, it's probably a pretty good deal, I think. Uh, I've had good use out of uh, the Handy Drill, and I'm looking to get plenty of good use out of uh, this little handy router. The, the speed doesn't seem to be so much that you have that uh, burning uh, that tends to happen from high speed tools. Even on the lowest setting of my Dremel, uh, I still get the peeled uh, uh, polystyrene, you know, that I have to clean up. Uh, if you saw the uh, uh, T34 build, uh, you probably saw uh, where I had to clean up uh, those little melted edges and stuff like that. So this this works pretty good. Uh, it doesn't do that. And, and it could be just that uh, this is a different type of bit as well. Uh, I really wanted to try those other bits to see if uh, we had that melting, but uh, I couldn't get them to fit into the, into the actual chuck. So rather than break the chuck, and that's the only one that this uh, router comes with, so <laughs> I don't want to do that. Uh, I need to find different bits. Uh, with a much smaller shaft. Uh, so probably back to Amazon looking for stuff like that. But uh, I think this is going to work out pretty good. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you uh, were introduced to a, maybe a new tool that you didn't know about or that you maybe have passed over before and you might want to give it a second thought. Uh, by the way, I am not paid by Tania, so <laughs> this is just this is just my my take on it. Um, so with that, guys, special thanks to all my uh, subscribers. I really appreciate you guys. It's because of you guys that I make these little videos, and I hope you enjoyed this one. And if you are new to the channel and uh, you're not a subscriber, I hope today that I earned that subscription. Uh, so what we'll do now is I will see you guys in the next one. Okay, take care.